Well, thanks for joining us. It's been an absolute delight uh, to have my friend, Prime Minister Luxon, here in Australia to welcome him on what is his third uh, visit uh, to Australia as Prime Minister. But of course, over a long period of time, he's been a regular visitor uh, here to Australia. And today's been an opportunity uh, for us to host the Prime Minister to talk through the range of issues that our closest of partners have together. Uh, our ties are, of course, older than our democracies, and connection uh, so strong we regard ourselves as family. Our history speaks for our common commitment to peace, prosperity and security. Our economic cooperation reflects our pursuit of new prosperity, and our flags remind us in all of that that we steer by the same stars. Ours is more than a bond of old affection. It is a partnership driven by a new determination, one that recognises that together we're stronger than just individual countries and that we'll work together not just in our relationship between each other but as well as part of the Pacific family and as good global citizens as well. Uh, the Prime Minister, when we first met following your election, uh, you said that we shared a commitment to lifting our ambition, and today we do just that. On the economy, our economies are already two of the most closely integrated in the world. But today we talked about how we can further modernise our single economic market. Our treasurers and climate ministers met recently and agreed to work together on the policies and that underpin the net zero transition. Today we talked about how Many of the initiatives in the Future Made in Australia can present opportunities for cooperation as well. I'm pleased that New Zealand has joined Australia in the Climate Club, which will support decarbonisation across the Tasman. And in addition to that, of course, we've spoken about a seamless, uh, a seamless uh, transition of our people being able to go through on a contactless way uh, between our two countries. In defence, we know that we face the most strategic circumstances in the, since the Second World War. And today, the Prime Minister and I have committed to working in lockstep, like never before, to ensure, assure our nation's security and prosperity. Uh, New Zealand is going through a defence review, a bit like what we did with our defence strategic review. And so we talked about the way that that experience that we have had can assist while New Zealand uh, works through those issues. We work through as well the benefits of interoperability, uh, the exchanges that we have between senior defence personnel that are so important for us. We also discuss the increasingly important role cyberspace plays in national security and agreed to enhance cooperation in tackling cyber threats. We reaffirm that international law applies in cyberspace and that a cyber attack on either country could, depending on its nature, constitute an attack under Article 4 of the ANZAS Treaty. Uh, we recognise that as Pacific nations our future success is tied to that of the region. And in a couple of weeks' time we'll join together at the Pacific Island Forum and we talked about the way that we will cooperate in the lead up to that, but also at that forum uh, that will be held uh, in Tonga in just a couple of weeks' time. Of course, uh, deep and enduring people to people links remain at the heart of our relationship. Uh, last July, my government made it easier for New Zealanders who call Australia home to become Australian citizens, and 60,000 people have applied, more than 30,000 have completed their citizenship. Uh, that is so important as we go forward. Prime Minister, just across the lake on Anzac Parade stands a monument to the relationship between our two nations. A towering bronze basket handle rising from soil taken from Gallipoli with the Maori inscription, each of us at a handle of the basket. Now, as always, Australia and New Zealand continue to share the load, doing that heavy lifting together as we work to move uh, as one to move our countries and our region forward. Before I ask uh, the Prime Minister to make some comments, I, I do want to just 
raise one issue, which is that our thoughts today are also with our friends in Turkey. Uh, we understand there are efforts underway to control fires that are burning on the Gallipoli Peninsula. Gallipoli is, of course, sacred ground to both of our countries. Some 60,000 Australians served at Gallipoli during the eight-month campaign and 8,700 Australians lost their lives. 18,000 were wounded during the campaign and there are more than 7,200 Australians buried in cemeteries or listed as missing there. So our thoughts today are with those who continue to care for those cemeteries and welcome thousands of Australians who visit Anzac headstones each year as they endure these difficult times. Prime Minister. Thank you, Prime Minister. Kanui te mihi ki a koutou. Kia ora, everybody, and good morning. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, can I just acknowledge the Ngunnawal people as traditional custodians of the land that we're meeting on, uh, and also to recognise uh, people or families with connections to the lands of the ACT. Prime Minister Albanese, can I say thank you again for hosting me. Thank you for the very warm welcome and the very special uh, ceremony at the beginning of our visit. Uh, we've already had some warm and productive talks and we look forward to continuing some of that uh, this afternoon as well. Uh, we are working hand in hand with Australia uh, and it's more important that we do so than ever before. We both face, as we've talked about extensively, uh, a challenging global environment that we haven't seen in decades. And our conversation, I think, reflected our shared assessment, our alignment on the issues uh, and the broad set of shared priorities that we have. As the Prime Minister said, we discussed defence and security issues in detail. And today, you know, Australia, as you know, is our only ally. And today, Prime Minister Albanese and I reaffirmed the strength of that alliance that we have together. Our defence forces are working seamlessly with our personnel currently deployed together offshore in nine different deployments. We affirmed also today that our alliance uh, can come into play if either New Zealand or Australia face a, sufficient, a, cyber, a sufficiently severe cyber attack. And we invited our defence ministers to also update and renew closer defence relations at their next meeting. We also discussed appointing senior officers into our Joint Forces headquarters, and we decided to prioritise combined defence procurement as we strive for greater interoperability. We also had a very good discussion about the Pacific with a focus on the centrality of the Pacific Islands Forum, uh, the meeting of which, as the Prime Minister talked about, is later this month. We talked about the investment and the trade and the innovation links that generate jobs uh, in each of our economies. Uh, the foundation, of course, is CER and our most comprehensive free trade agreement, which continues to evolve and change uh, given global uh, environments and conditions. And we can agree to continue to work on the need to reduce friction in doing business on both sides of the Tasman. We are aligning our regulatory approaches in emerging sectors, including battery and EV technologies. And New Zealand announced earlier this week that we intend to align our approach to regulating gene technology with the Australian legislation and approach as well. We'll continue to be aligning our building standards to help maximise efficiency of trans-Tasman trade and competition in the building and construction sector at home in New Zealand. And Prime Minister Albanese and I are also committed to improving the operation of the Trans-Tasman Mutual Recognition Arrangement to support more seamless trade between our two countries. And we discussed, uh, as you highlighted, uh, the report on advancing seamless travel, which again lays the connection for our people-to-people -people connections and obviously our economic ties. The Prime Minister and I also discussed the freedom of Australians and New Zealanders to travel and work and live in each other's country, which is a unique feature of our relationship. Uh, again, I commend the Prime Minister and thank him uh, deeply for the changes that he announced last year to create a direct pathway to citizenship for New Zealanders and Australia. That is life-changing. It's turning hard-working Kiwis into your very best Australians. Uh, and we also discussed 501 deportation with a focus on the common sense approach to deportations that addresses people whose formative experiences were nearly all in Australia. And Prime Minister Albanese and I agreed to engage closely on this. Can I say, Prime Minister, thank you again for the very warm welcome. Thank you for the friendship. Thank you for the hospitality. Uh, thank you for your commitment to this relationship, uh, which we so appreciate. Uh, and I guess with that, we're happy to take any questions. Thanks, Prime Minister. First is Stephen. Thanks, Prime Minister. Uh, can I just ask about one point in the joint statement, the reference to increasing our combined operational tempo and presence together in the Indo-Pacific region? Is it possible for you to give a bit more detail about what's being contemplated? Are we talking about New Zealand making an increased contribution to existing multilateral exercises? 
Are you contemplating more work together in humanitarian and disaster relief? Can you get a sense? Of, can you give us a sense of what's being yeah. contemplated there? And, and if I could add, Prime Minister, what you've obviously got a defence capability review underway. What sort of investments do you believe New Zealand will have to make through that review to make a meaningful contribution to these efforts? Yeah. Look, I take the first point. You know, we want to be uh, working together as much as possible wherever we can be. Uh, I was recently in Japan, uh, visited uh, the team that is there with 11 countries, Australia and New Zealand, working together, uh, actually you know, doing monitoring of North, you know, sanctions, UN sanctions against North Korea. It's a good example of where you know, I want New Zealand forces working closely with Australian forces in those kinds of theatres uh, where we've got common values that we're standing up for and, and protecting. With respect to our defence capability plan, uh, what, we've, what we have is a new leadership team within our defence um, of our different forces. We have a new de uh, department secretary. We obviously have a new minister. And I've asked them as a new leadership team to, state, to go back to a blank piece of paper and actually think about the capabilities that New Zealand and the platforms that New Zealand uh, wants to build over time in its defence capability. So that work we hope to have completed towards the end of the year, maybe early next year. Uh, but obviously we want to do that in close engagement because our intention is to say you know, we want to be fully interoperable with Australia's defence forces. We want to be a force multiplier for Australia. And by making sure that we can do things like joint procurement, we have alignment on what we can bring, uh, that's the work that will go on through the course of the year. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I join with, uh, with the Prime Minister on saying that there are enormous benefits to gain just in efficiencies. Mm. We have common values, we have common objectives, whether it be uh, securing uh, peace and prosperity in the region, or whether it be assisting in natural disasters. Uh, what we do now is to cooperate wherever possible, but we want to extend that, and it makes sense as well uh, for us to look at interoperability, uh, because then you can get uh, real gains going forward. Right, um, Jenna. Obviously, um, with the 501s policy, with the implementation of Direction 110, there is concern from New Zealand side that you will revert to sending people back to New Zealand that have little to no connection to New Zealand. How do you justify contributing to New Zealand's crime and gang problem with what are effectively Aussie-grown criminals? No, well, um, notwithstanding the provocative nature of uh, the tone in the question, uh, what we have is uh, an understanding that whilst we have a uh, common purpose, we don't have a uh, uniform position, but we respect each other's position. Australia's job is, of course, uh, to look after our national interest. Uh, we say that the safety uh, of Australians is the number one consideration in the uh, Ministerial Direction 110 but it also continues to apply common sense, a common sense approach. That is all we try to bring to this, and uh, that is understood. Uh, the next question is from Tom. Thanks, Prime Minister. Prime Minister Luxon, could a joint general purpose frigate project be part of the interoperability that you've talked about with your Australian counterpart? And is it possible that that um, cooperation could be undercut by Australia's efforts to recruit Kiwis to the Australian Defence Force. Do you have any concerns about that policy? Um, look, I don't have any, you know, any concerns about the, the, the recruitment of New, Zealand, New Zealanders into the Australian Defence Force. Um, again, you know, it's a bit early for me to presuppose you know, the outcome of that defence capability plan. And in fairness to the people that are doing that work, I want them to be able to go through that work. Uh, build up a proper plan that as we invest more in defence in, in subsequent years, we know we've actually got a high quality strategy that's actually building the capability that we want to see so that it can be interoperable. So, you know, but you know, those are good examples of areas where we should be collaborating and doing joint procurement as much as possible. Uh, and when I say interoperable, that's what we mean. Uh, but again, as particularly with the frigates, let's let the review go through uh, over the course of the year and we'll pick it up uh, when we've got the, the, the plan delivered. Um, who's next on our side? TVNZ? Yes. Yeah. Kia ora, Prime Ministers. Uh, Mr Albanese, do you believe that New Zealand should be joining AUKUS Pilatu? And if so, uh, when would the group be extending that invite? Is there a particular time frame that you have? Well, I, th I think there will be opportunities for New Zealand to participate in Pilatu, just as we've reached out in Japan and other countries particularly uh, can participate on a case-by-case -case basis. What we're talking about here is uh, technology and its application. 
and just as interoperability between our two defence forces is a priority and an objective, it, it makes sense, therefore, when we're considering Pillar 2 uh, of the AUKUS agreement, uh, to engage like-minded countries. Uh, we share very much common values and we share common objectives. And uh, it, it is not surprising that we'll look at uh, any opportunity for uh, including uh, New Zealand uh, in Pillar 2, given we're actually talking about exchanges of senior, you know, one star and two star uh, senior defence personnel being embedded in each other's defence forces. So we want to make sure that there's as much cooperation as possible because that will make uh, the combined objective that we have much more effective. Uh, Dom. Can I just ask on the policing initiative set to go before PIF, um, are you able to respond to concerns from the Solomon Islands that it's been steamrolled through the forum? And um, to Mr Luxon, on the same issue, what are your thoughts uh, or can you elaborate on discussions about working with Australia in the policing initiative? And more broadly, we have an Australian minister saying there's no role for China in policing the Pacific. Is that your view as well? And sorry to be a bit cheeky, but is PNG getting an NRL team? Um, the, uh, the Pacific Policing Initiative is a Pacific-led, Australian-supported initiative. It is arisen from the chiefs of police from across the Pacific have been designing the initiative in order to respond to the priorities of the Pacific for a safe and a secure region. Uh, we believe, as the rest of the Pacific family do, that security uh, in our region is primarily the responsibility of our family. And so the uh, Pacific Policing Initiative is consistent with that. Uh, Pacific leaders have agreed that our security is best found within our family, and I think that will be certainly a theme that we have uh, in the lead up to, and, and we'll see what comes out of the PIP meeting in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, and I just reiterate, you know, New Zealand's totally supportive of the policing initiative, and we we're very keen to be involved as well. Uh, and the reason is pretty simple, is that we've actually had policing arrangements and collaboration in the Pacific from both Australia and New Zealand with our Pacific Island friends. Uh, and I just, you know, I recently visited Fiji, and it was very interesting to me if you start to think about transnational crime and border crime, uh, you know, that you have, you know, narcotics, organised crime, uh, floating quantities of meth uh, off the coast of Fiji headed to Australia and New Zealand. And so um, within the Pacific, I think it will be well received. Um, who's the last from our side? Uh, uh, Jason. Yeah, thank you, Prime Minister. Our best dressed journalist uh, with our, in our delegation today. <laughs> this is the Prime Minister. Um, Sorry, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just yeah, ask about the, um, the, the cyber attack initiative that you talked about in terms of um, uh, triggering Article 4? Could you just elaborate on what that means in practice and what it is that you're um, worried about in some of the tangible um, outcomes of this agreement today? Look, uh, we're just recognising that uh, obviously modern warfare has moved into you know, the cyberspace. Uh, and uh, should New Zealand come under a, a severe cyber attack, uh, both countries, uh, we would invoke the, the arrangements we have under our allies' uh, our arrangements. And it's you know, pretty simple. I mean, we can see warfare has changed, and um, cyber is a very, very large part of it. And so we're just making sure that that is modern and it's reflective of the environment that we operate within and, and how warfare is undertaken. So, um, uh, you know, it's a pretty severe uh, uh, cyber attack that we need to see, but um, it's important that we have that, you know, that covered. Well, I agree with the Prime Minister. Uh, you know, we would make this assessment on a case-by-case -case basis, obviously, but a, a cyber attack uh, can have as great an impact as a, an, a, an attack uh, from uh, traditional means, uh, the way that we view, have viewed warfare, uh, is changing. Mm -hmm. An attack on the economy can bring down uh, a... Uh, the, the operation of, a, of, of an entire society. Uh, so we know uh, that just as uh, we are dealing with this uh, here in Australia, we deal with it through the Australian Signals Directorate and, and other issues as well. We've ramped up our cyber defences. Uh, we're working with the business community and with civil society as well on these issues uh, because we saw recently uh, 
an, an impact that was global mm -hmm. from an event. Uh, so we need to prepare uh, for all of these issues and we need to modernise and make sure that the agreement that we have uh, reflects modern issues. So thank you very much. Uh, Christopher Luxon, keep it simple with you today. <laughs> uh, Christopher Luxon and I have known each other a very long period of time. We have a unique way of communicating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I have to say, uh, the Prime Minister understood Tarao very well. Yeah, Is awesome. Oh, look, they're cheeky. <laughs> now, now we're getting... See, this is cooperation yes. from the Australian yes. media that we often don't see together. Um, but in the spirit of cooperation, <laughs> look, at my position has been clear for a long period of time uh, that the people of Papua New Guinea uh, are very passionate about rugby league. Uh, it is uh, a, their national sport, effectively. Uh, you can't go. When I travelled uh, with my friend Prime Minister Marape on, along the Kokoda Track, there's something remarkable about being in one of the most dense jungle areas of the world and you come into an opening and there's little kids wearing cowboys jumpers, origin jumpers, even rabbitose jumpers. No South Joe jumpers though. No, right? no, there are no, rabbitose no, jumpers there. All right, just checking. Uh, always. There's always a random South guy. Uh, wherever you go. It must have been a hard trail for the Prime Minister Marape, eh? Because you can just imagine what was going on. He was being taught about South Rabbitohs non-stop, wasn't he? All, all the way. He must have loved it. <laughs> he, uh, so, look, we're, we're working through uh, those issues. Uh, I confirm that we're in discussions with uh, the Australian Rugby League, with the New Zealand Government and the Australian Government. We see this not just being about sport, but being about economic development yeah. and about cementing the relationship that our two great countries have. Uh, but today it's about the great relationship that, that we have as yeah. well. A great relationship that has always had a sense of humour yeah. in the middle of it. <laughs> I love that. Well said. Thanks, Good to see you.